Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I wanted to talk about getting rid of redness in your skin. So if you are over 50 or really any age and you have a lot of redness through your face, your nose and across your cheeks, um, there can be a lot of causes of that. Some of them you really need to go see a dermatologist for things like rosacea or severe acne. But there are other reasons why you may have redness in your skin and you may be able to do something about them yourself at home. Some of those things are if you just have reactive extra sensitive skin or if you're using the wrong skincare ingredients or if you're using too many skincare ingredients or if you're just going too hard into a skincare routine way too fast and your skin has reacted. With the advent of social media, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, everybody is telling you that you have to use all these different products on your skin and there's so many new skincare launches. You're running to the store and grabbing all these skincare products with all these different ingredients because everyone's telling you that they're so great for your skin and you're gonna have this beautiful glowy skin and you're using all this stuff and you're like all I have to show for it is red irritated sometimes even older looking skin and that's not what you want out of your skincare routine so that was me a few years ago when I first started into anti-aging skincare you know, I went in too heavy, too fast. I pretty much slammed on the brakes, was like, why does my face hurt every day? Why is it so red every day? Pulled everything out, then started doing research into skincare, what could help with redness, how you could use ingredients so that they didn't irritate your skin. So I have seven tips to share with you today. They all have to do with your skincare routine, what kind of ingredients you're using. So the first place in your skincare routine that there could be a culprit is in the way you wash your face. A lot of the face washes that you may have used in your younger years are very harsh on the skin. Either the pH is not appropriate appropriate and strips the skin or they have a lot of detergents that will strip and dry your skin or if you're using wipes that leaves detergent on your skin. I know they make those wipes and micellar water sound like they are the best thing since sliced bread, like they're as pure as water and you just leave that on your skin and it's all good. There are actually detergents and surfactants in there that you are leaving on your skin. So if you're using wipes um, or any kind of leave-on cleanser, definitely stop doing that and always rinse cleansers off your face after you wash. But for me, since I do wear a lot of makeup and I do wear tinted sunscreen and really tenacious sunscreen every day, it's hard to get that stuff off at night because it's made to stick on your face, right? It's made to stay and last. So you need something that's going to get it off, but not in a harsh way. So that's why I always recommend doing a double cleanse with the first step to remove the sunscreen and the makeup up being an oil-based cleanse. So two of my favorite products for that currently are the Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm and the Goku Jun Oil Cleanse. I use this one like on a day like today when I don't have any eye makeup on and I just have sunscreen on. I'll just wash with this and the way that you use these to get them to work is do not wet your face first. No water first. You put these on dry skin and you let the oil do its work and what it does is it just dissolves all those things that make these things stick on your skin. So um, the Good Molecules Instant Cleansing Balm is more of a solid balm. So you just scoop out a little bit of this, you rub it into your dry skin, and then when you rinse these with water, they emulsify with the water and it rinses down the drain. Now afterwards, you may have a little bit of oil left on your face, which you do want to get off so that your skincare will penetrate better. So after that, I use a very gentle, mild cleanser. I use Neutrogena Hydro Boost for sensitive skin. This one is fragrance free and it's super mild and super gentle. And by the time I'm done cleansing my skin with both of these, there isn't a trace of makeup or sunscreen left on my face. They're very, very effective, but my skin isn't left stripped. It's not dry. It's not red. You know, if you go into your bathroom and wash your face at night and then your face is bright red, that should be a clue that what you're using to wash your face is not your friend. So you want everything to be your friend. You want to be nice to your skin. You want to be good to your skin. You want to keep it nice and calm. And your skin will respond better when you're not so harsh with it. 
Then tip number two is to look at your sunscreen and see if you're using chemical or mineral sunscreen. So there's basically two kinds of sunscreening ingredients. There are the chemical filters, things like avobenzone and homocellate, and there are mineral sunscreens, which are things like zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. The chemical ingredients, especially avobenzone and homocellate, for me, really irritate my skin. Now, you've heard of zinc oxide, that is what's used in like diaper paste, and the reason that it's used in diaper cream is because it's to treat a rash. It's very calming and soothing, it creates a barrier on the skin, and it helps to trap in moisture, so skin with a more intact moisture barrier is going to be able to um, withstand those aggressors in your skincare a little bit better. So that's why zinc oxide-based sunscreen is so much better for your skin, it calms your skin, it soothes your skin, it doesn't irritate your eyes if it gets in your eyes. You know, I used to use standard chemical sunscreen when I first started my channel. One of the best things I did back then was start to use a sunscreen. But what I didn't realize is that my sunscreen was irritating my skin. And so while I was trying to make it look better and using all this anti-aging stuff, I would use my Retin-A at night and then in the morning I'd use my vitamin C, then I would put on my chemical sunscreen and oh my gosh, my face would just start burning and I was like, what is happening? Back then I didn't know that there were two different kinds of sunscreen. That's where all my research came in. I started learning about mineral sunscreen and the rest is history. That led me to start doing my sunscreen testing videos where I test like 20 mineral sunscreens a year looking for a good one because it's really hard to formulate a good mineral sunscreen. It's pretty easy to formulate a good chemical sunscreen and I have been able to find a lot of really great mineral sunscreens over the years so I have some to recommend to you here today. Uh, my holy grail ones currently are the MyShell Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50 that is a fabulous sunscreen. Um, all the sunscreens that I have for you today are going to be tinted because it's much easier to get a mineral sunscreen to work if it's tinted because that will hide the white cast. My other holy grail sunscreen is Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44. This is a hydrating sunscreen. The My Shell tends to be a little bit more drying, so if you have oily skin, I would say to get the My Shell. More dry skin, I would say to try the Elta MD. If you're looking for a drugstore brand, two of the best ones are the CeraVe Hydrating Tinted Face Sunscreen SPF 30 and the Australian Gold Botanical Face Tinted BB SPF 50. Again, this one will be more for dry skin as this is a really hydrating emollient formula. This one, the Australian Gold, will be more for oily skin people because it can be a little bit drying. But they both look great on your skin. They both help to protect your moisture barrier. They both won't sting your eyes. And then one last one that I just tried this week that just came out is Color Science Sun Forgettable Flex Face Shield. This one is really cool because it's going to come out and then kind of match your skin tone, even though it does come in, I think it's three or four different shades. So this one comes out white. But as you rub it in, it changes to match your skin tone. So this is a really amazing advancement in sunscreen technology. So no matter what your skin tone is, it should be able to match you. And I tested this one the other day. I really like it. I wore it under makeup. It wore great under makeup. Just wanted to tell you guys about that one. If you've always had a hard time getting a sunscreen that didn't have a white cast or that matched your skin tone, give Color Science Flex a try. I'll leave a link to that and everything else in the video in the info box below the video. So, Mineral sunscreen, definitely a way to get your skin to stop reacting, to stop stinging. The second I switched from chemical sunscreen to mineral sunscreen, my face stopped stinging. I had even like stopped using Retin-A because my face was stinging and really all I had to do was switch over to mineral sunscreen. So I got back on Retin-A and that really helped my skin a lot. So speaking of Retin-A, that brings us into tip number three, which is if you are using any kind of a retinoid and your skin is red or itchy or irritated or burning or peeling, then you definitely need to cut back on the retinoid in some way. Cutting back can mean that you use less of it. It can mean that you use it fewer nights a week, or it can mean that you go to a lower concentration formula. So I get my Retin-A with 
Curology. I've been using Curology for about three and a half years now, and I'm a Curology ambassador now. So this portion of the video is going to be sponsored by Curology because the great thing about Curology is that it is a custom prescription retinoid that's mixed just for you. So the way it works is that you go on their website, you upload pictures of your skin, you tell them what your concerns are, and they mix up a custom formula that has three active ingredients, and it's specifically for your skin. And if you do have sensitive and reactive skin, you can tell them that and they'll start you on a lower strength of the formula with the tretinoin and then they'll help you to work up over time. If you have a tendency to have rosacea or any other redness in your skin or if you're having breakouts and the red spots from your pimples take forever to heal, most likely they'll put in uh, either azelaic acid or they'll put in tranexamic acid. Those are two ingredients that they use that help with redness in the skin. So they've got a lot of new ingredients that they can add to the formula that they've added lately. They set you up with a skincare provider who's a medical person who's going to prescribe you your custom mix. So since I started with them three years ago, my skin has become so much clearer. I was using tretinoin back then, but I wasn't using it in combination with clindamycin and azelaic acid and those two added ingredients have really just taken my skin to the next level where it's so clear and it's because I've been on this consistently for three years you know I have switched my formula around a little bit but I've kept basically the same things I've upped my tretinoin over time which is another great thing that you can do with them if you're just starting out with retin-a you can start at a lower dose and they can bump you up slowly over time so that you don't end up with irritation I mean and I just love this service that it magically arrives at my doorstep every month I don't have to think about it I don't have to be like oh no I'm almost out I have to get online and order a new one of you know whatever else I'm using which is what I have to do with everything else in my skincare routine but where this one just comes automatically it just makes it so easy to never be without the most important thing in my skincare routine. For just about anything that's bothering you about your skin, retinoids are the recommendation. If you have enlarged pores and you want to try to shrink them, retinoids. If you have wrinkles and you want to get rid of them, retinoids. If you want to have firmer skin, if you got like a little sagging at your jaw, retinoids is the answer for just about everything. Your first month, if you want to try it, is free. There will be a link to it in the info box below the video. You can just click on that link, fill out the form. You pay $4.95 for shipping and handling the first month. After that, it's $24.95 for this size bottle. They also have a bigger bottle that will ship less frequently that costs more, but it does save you money over the long haul. And actually, Curology kind of covers us for tip number four and five, because tip number four is to add Azlan acid into your skincare routine which you can get in your Curology mix. So azelaic acid is a great ingredient that is used in prescription strength to treat rosacea and so azelaic acid is really great at reducing inflammation and redness in the skin and you can get that in your Curology bottle as well. It's antibacterial so it fights acne, it decreases swelling and redness in the skin. Now, if you don't want to go the Curology route, you can just get a plain azelaic acid product to add into your skincare routine. The Ordinary makes this azelaic acid suspension, which is 10%, so that's a good amount of azelaic acid in there. This is a nice little cream. It's very inexpensive, so you can just add this into your skincare routine. You know, you can either spot treat with it or you can put it all over whichever you prefer. So tip number five is to add niacinamide into your skincare routine if you don't have it in there already because niacinamide is an antioxidant that is like a superstar ingredient. It's one of my favorite ingredients of all time and it's fabulous to have in your skincare routine. It will help to reduce redness in your skin so it's great to have it. But the research shows that you only want to use up to 5% of niacinamide. Anything over 5% can cause increased redness and increased irritation in the skin. So there's all these products out on the market now that have 10%, 20% niacinamide. If your skin can take those and they're going to work to reduce the size of your pores and reduce your wrinkles and reduce your redness, then um, that's great. Good luck to you using them. But I've tried both the 10% and the 20% and all they did for me was increase my irritation because I have very 
you know, reactive sensitive skin. So you have to kind of walk the fine line with niacinamide. So I like to use niacinamide in my skincare routine, but I like it to be in 5% or under. So if say you didn't want to have the clindamycin in your Curology, you can get niacinamide in there instead. And then you'll have tretinoin, niacinamide, and azelaic acid, which is going to be like the trifecta of anti-aging skincare and also redness reduction, pore reduction, wrinkle reduction, everything reduction, make your skin look fabulous all in one bottle. Now, of course, you can also get uh, niacinamide boosters from like Paula's Choice. Where I get my niacinamide is from my CeraVe PM lotion. I use this in the morning. I love this lotion because it's super hydrating. It's got glycerin, it's got ceramides, but it also has niacinamide. And then I have another cream, my uh, Olay Regenerist Night Cream that has niacinamide in it too. So I'm using niacinamide morning and night. Probably neither one is a full 5%. I'd say they're each probably maybe around three to four percent, just a guess. I don't really think that you need a whole separate product. I like skincare that multitasks. So with the niacinamide, just be careful with it. Check some of your labels. Make sure that you're not using like, you know, five products that all have a high concentration of niacinamide in them because that could be too much and it could be setting you up for a lot of extra skin redness. All right, then tip number six is to use a dedicated calming cream. Um, I don't really use one of those on my face, but I do use one on my neck because my neck is so much more reactionary than my face. And while I've managed to decrease a lot of the redness in my face, a lot of times my neck will just react to jewelry or you know fabric if I'm wearing something close. Your neck has far fewer oil glands. It has far fewer hair follicles. So it's just the skin is so much more sensitive. I have tried a lot of different soothing creams on it. The one that I love so much that of course you can use it on your face or just as well on your face is from Derma E. It's their eczema relief cream. The active ingredient in here is colloidal oatmeal. Now this isn't anything that's like anti-aging but it's so calming and soothing for the skin. You can get colloidal oatmeal in uh, Aveeno products. That's kind of their anchor ingredient. There's a lot of good moisturizers in here. So this is just a really nice lightweight cream. I put it on morning and night and it just really soothes my neck. But anytime that my face is getting red and inflamed, I also add it on my face. So getting a dedicated cream like that is something great to add into your skincare routine. And then tip number seven is try not to over exfoliate or overuse your alpha hydroxy acids. I know that we are all bombarded with influencers and advertisements for all kinds of glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, even salicylic acid uh, products that promise to give you shrunken pores and exfoliated skin and glowy skin and the best skin of your life, which it can, but you have to use it responsibly and you have to use it carefully. I saw a kid on uh, TikTok who was using a uh, acid peel, a glycolic acid peel that you were supposed to leave on for 10 minutes and he left it on his skin for an hour <laughs> and then shockingly his skin was bright red. So try to be responsible with your acids. I know that right now everyone is going hard into skincare and I, I even just got a comment from someone on Instagram saying I want to go hard into skincare this year and I'm like whoa, whoa okay <laughs> that's great but Remember, it's it's skin. I mean, like it is a living, breathing organ and you can't just whip it and expect it to be like, oh, great. Now I'm fabulous. I mean, it is very resilient. It's the one organ that can actually regenerate itself, you know, the scar tissue and healing and all that, which is wonderful about it. But you have to walk that fine line. You know, I've tried to work glycolic acid, which is like the big daddy of the alpha hydroxy acids into my skincare routine for years. I would love to be able to use it my skin's just too sensitive, so I can't use it every single day. I do use it once a week in a peel that I leave on for 10 minutes. I wash it off and call it a day. So rather than glycolic acid, what I can use every day is lactic acid. It does all the same things over time that glycolic acid does. It loosens the glue that holds that layer of dead skin cells on, so it will give you that nice glowy skin. It's also hydrating, so it's helping to repair your skin barrier by hydrating the skin. Using lactic acid actually helps with production of ceramides, so lactic acid is really 
really good. The lactic acid product I use is from The Ordinary. It's their 10% lactic acid plus 2% HA. Um, I couldn't even start with this 10% product. When I started, I wanted to ease in to make sure I didn't go back into that redness overdrive state of my face. So I started with the 5% version of this. It's so great that they come out with two different versions. So you can start at the 5%, work your way up slowly over time to the 10%, and that can work out great for you. So that's a great product. And if you want to see how I work all of these products into my skincare routine, I'll link my skincare routine video right up here. That was the most recent one that I did last winter. So the net net is to try to be kinder and gentler to your skin. I know that we're all in a rush for big anti-aging things to happen and have that beautiful glowy skin that we see everybody having. But you know what? These things take time. It's better to ease in with them. It's better to back off of them so that you don't have a bad irritation reaction and just keep your skin happy. Your skin will tell you when it's unhappy and that's when you need to shake things up, do things a little bit differently. That is everything that I wanted to share today about how to calm redness in your skin and have your redness look a lot better going forward. So if you enjoyed the video, found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.